I'm Julia Noyes, your instructor for the oil painting class. So this is lesson two. So don't forget, if you have a question, text me. Please don't email, just text me. The number is 402-615-2789. Now identify yourself, your name, and what class you're in, please. So for the second lesson, we're going to be doing floral. And these are going to be some of the handouts you're going to have. But you can start practicing anytime because these are the core techniques used in oil painting. So first of all, you know you always have to do a thumbnail. You get four points for doing a thumbnail. And a thumbnail is simply a little sketch. So here's my little sketch. It's not super detailed, but I'm going to do some water lilies. It's helping me to start figuring out what I want to do. Now you may think, well, I don't know what to do. So you can get on the internet, you can find out some ideas. Don't copy anyone on the internet, of course. You can go out into nature, take some photos. In fact, I want you to take some photos so you can get some ideas that are yours. So this is a photograph that uh, Tom Marshall took and I have his permission to use this for my oil painting idea. So I love these shapes and I like the water, the water lily pads. I like the darks against the lights. So the most important thing is to give inspiration that you really like. Don't, with, don't start with something you don't like, of course. Make it something that is very inspiring and has meaning to you. And the water lily lotus is very important to me when I I went to Thailand with a friend. I was really interested in the lotus and how they were used symbolically and in paintings. So the water lily has meaning to me. So pick something that has meaning to you. So the first thing to do is to get a photo taken. Because from that photograph, I want you to print it off so I can actually see what you're seeing and what you like. So this might be the inspiration for one of you. You see a, a beautiful flower outside, and then it becomes your idea. It's an original because you have found it, and you're figuring out what you want. You can also use soap flowers, other things, if you just can't find any fresh flowers or anything that motivates you. We have a lot of things in our classroom that can be used. It might be a close-up part of it. It doesn't have to be the whole arrangement. So this is really step number one, getting a design for your thumbnail. Next, on your worksheet, this is, uh, I'm going to go down to right here so we can get this covered. You put down red paint plus blue paint equals purple. So this whole little assignment here, this is a sample sheet, gets you to figure out when you mix red and blue, you get purple. But this doesn't really show me how these are mixed. It just says red plus blue equals purple. This, however, shows it from red to blue to, here's the purple color. But this isn't blended very well. It's not, it's not as complete as it should be. You know, it doesn't really show the blending very easily. So here was the yellow, and here was the blue, and this made green. So I want you to do a better job blending, and for blending, we've already talked about this, use a brush, a softer brush, and you're gonna have to, of course, do this when this is wet, but blend back and forth, back and forth. Wipe your brush frequently, because it will pick up color and maybe get dirty, the way you don't want it to look. So clean your brush off. Your blending should look something like this where I can see how it's getting lighter and it's blending into another color. It's blending, blending, blending. It's done nice and neatly. This is really smooth blending, these right here. So I can see how it blends. So you're gonna have two sample sheets on this. One is mixing color red and blue to make purple. These are simply mixing red and white and green together. So this is a little different because this is showing me gradation. You're going from red to white to green, blue to purple to black. 
orange to yellow to white. So I want it blended like this. This is not enough blending. Because in your oil painting, you know, your, pa your paintings, you're going to do a lot of blending. Blending is one of the major techniques. So this is worth practicing and learning how to do this. So you get six points for doing your sample sheets. So there's two sample sheets. There's this one and this one. And as long as you complete them correctly, which this would not be correct, it needs to be blended more, you get six points for this, you get four points for doing your thumbnail, and you get ten points for your painting if it meets all the requirements. So we'll be talking about more of that in class. I want to show you, I'm going to go back to this on a floral because often we have petals that maybe we want to do with a palette knife. And with the palette knife, you can, remember these are palette knives? They come in different shapes. They come big, they come little. They're great for blending. I love uh, blending my colors together on my little palette, my disposable palette. But you can also paint with these. And what you want to do is when you're painting with these palette knives, you want to think about what shape you want the petal to be. So for example, if I like this size, it almost looks like a petal, doesn't it? And I'm going into my paint. Maybe I want to be um, have some other color. I want to add some more color to my white so it's not just a stark white. Now I could leave my paint like this. This is called broken color, where I'm not totally blending it. When I totally blend it, there's not white threads showing through this. It's just totally blended, blended, blended. And that might be what you want in some areas, but maybe in the flower areas, I want it to be more broken than this. So I'm going to add some white and leave more of the broken strips of other color within this. Because I, I think it looks more natural. It looks like it's more from nature. I can use different colors of red, red orange, red violet. So here I like that because it has a variety of color. So once I have that, I can decide, you know, I want to get quite a bit on my palette knife, and I could decide, okay, here's my little flower shape, and I can simply use this palette knife to put in some of those petals. I want to put them in really thick. You could decide maybe you want thinner leaves or thinner petals. And I'm not worrying about if this goes over the edge, that's fine with me. Now, I might want even more variety in my reds. I want, the petals are starting to look too much the same. And in nature, everything is different. So I'm using this palette knife for my advantage, getting it down here, pressing down, pulling up, pressing down, pulling up, getting even more color variety. Maybe I want these to have much more red in them. You know, maybe I want this to be more red here. Pushing down, pulling up. So this is just fun. You can experiment because here's your little sample to experiment with. I'm just doing it bigger here so you can see. I like that these are not the same color. And it's not even bothering me that there's some white showing because once this is dried, I can come back and fill in some of those areas. You know, um, this flower, it's okay, but it's kind of boring because it's just facing straight on. So many times in nature, we don't really see flowers that way. They're this way, this way, this way, this way. So I would try to avoid just kind of the frontal view of everything. If you're having more than one flower, definitely don't have them all facing the same way because it just doesn't look natural. So have some like this going towards the side, some could be going to this side. You know, maybe we want to have a, a lot more variety. Maybe some of these should be really red. And this, these petals out here are combined. So I'm kind of moving these around. These petals are together. They're kind of clumped together. We're not seeing everything in one little Petal. That isn't really how we see things in nature. I mean, I think in junior high we think one, two, three, four, five 
petals, they should all be the same, they should all be the same length, they should all be the same color. But if you look at the old masters, people who really do flowers in a beautiful way, they all have variety. And that's the thing we love about nature. Nature has such variety because the light is maybe shining on this petal, and maybe it's shining on this petal, but some of these other petals are going to be in the shade or they're not lit as well. So for right now, I'm gonna let this dry and then later I'm gonna come back and add some little centers, add some leaves. It looks very impressionistic. If you want them more detailed than this, you can do it more detailed. But I do want you to learn your palette knife, how to use it, and don't be afraid to clump some things together. Because if we're seeing a whole bouquet of these, these are going to look actually more realistic than having them too much like this or too much like that. They're too much the same. So see if you can get variety in your petals using a palette knife. And then this last sample is just to show how you can do different lines in different widths. You know, so a little brush like this is going to create a very little line, isn't it? You can get very little lines with a little brush. That's perfect. But if you want bigger shapes, use a big brush. I see students using a tiny little brush where they could use a bigger brush and suddenly, in one stroke, they can have this filled in. Now, if your paint gets too dry, like this paint is getting a little bit dry, I can add turpinoid to it. It's what will thin the paint. It's also what we use to clean our brushes. So we can get some very flowy paint that's very runny. So if you don't want it to run, then Clean this out with your rag a little bit so it's, it's not so runny. So that's a variety of ways you can use turpinoid to make it super runny. You might want some areas that are super runny in your background. So this is what we're going to start with first in doing your floral. You're going to pick out a floral. You're going to take a photograph of it. You're going to do a thumbnail. And you're going to practice these techniques on your technique sheet. And then we will progress from that point into your painting. So this is floral, number two painting class. So incorporate the techniques you've already learned in, in painting number one, and we'll see you in class. This is Julia Noyce, bye.